Uh, welcome to the first episode of Casey's Finest. This is where I'm going to be interviewing some of the finest businessmen who have walked the streets here in Kansas City. Uh, my very first guest is Ed Van Buskirk. Uh, Ed, thanks for joining us. Yeah. All right, so Ed, you've had a uh, full career in business, um, and it's been um, quite all over the place, but there are a few themes that I think we can pull out of it. But I want to start with your corporate experience. Um, you had three kind of main jobs uh, in the corporate world. First was software engineering at the Burroughs Corporation, mm -hmm. um, consulting services at the Digital Equipment Corporation, um, and then lastly, the Sprint Headquarters uh, data center, you were a manager there. Yes. Um, where in there, and, and by the way, now we're here at his offices at We Are IT. Uh, this is the company that Ed founded here. Where in your corporate experience did you realize that you were going to be an entrepreneur and that you were eventually going to uh, start your own company? Well. I there probably was a, a, a specific moment, but I think a little bit over time um, to realize that you can maybe break out of a corporate environment and that guaranteed paycheck, which isn't necessarily so guaranteed, and do something on your own. Uh, you might get the idea that maybe you'd like to do that, but it takes a while for that to mature and become something that you uh, say, I'm going to do it. Um, but I would say that, that over time it was primarily due to um, two things. One is, in the corporate environment, I didn't feel like I was um, contributing to the community or, or really accomplishing something meaningful. Uh, in a large corporation, you're very easily replaceable. And uh, not that you're not doing important things, but it's just hard to see how you're making an impact um, in the community, um, like a doctor would be helping a uh, you know someone get over a, a serious illness or deliver a baby. I mean that's a pretty significant kind of thing to accomplish. And in the corporate environment, I just didn't feel like I was accomplishing that. And I knew I needed to do something that would feel like I would have a, a meaningful impact. Uh, secondly, it was frustration uh, over that very thing. I that that, that frustration that. Uh, we would get all of our ducks in a row to do something in the corporate world and make a change and then something would come down from uh, the uh, upper management that would say, no, we're not going to do that anymore. And you've spent two years working on this and now it's, there's no, not, nothing tangible to see from it. Right. Um, and uh, lo looking at the skills that I had, I wanted to leverage the skills that, that I had developed uh, over you know, the first uh, you know, handful of, uh, or several handfuls of years of my, my career and wanted to, um, uh, to apply technology to help the smaller businesses. At the time, technology was very new still. A lot of businesses didn't have computer technology, they didn't know how to even buy a computer uh, at the time. And I saw that there was just a need. And, and that's really where it started when I realized there truly is a need for small businesses to have somebody to support them in their technology. And once I saw that there was a need that I could fill, things started to, to flow forward faster. Okay, so you graduate from uh, Rockhurst University. Yes. And uh, you're getting out into the world and you get your very first job. Are you thinking about all those things? Are you thinking about where technology's at and, and having an impact and all that stuff? Or are you just trying to make a quick buck? Well, uh, first getting out of, out of uh, school, uh, my, my first thoughts was, I've got some money in my pocket. I can not have to spend every night in the library <laughs> instead of studying. Um, the, um, so you know, just getting out, I, was, I, I knew I still had a lot to learn. Finishing the book studies is, uh, it is a huge accomplishment, but now you got to start to learn how this actually applies in the business world. And so really that's what I focused on, is doing a good job in my jobs at Burroughs and at 
Digital Equipment Corporation and at Sprint, just doing the best that I can um, and learning as much as I can as, as I went, went about doing that. As far as uh, turning the switch to become an entrepreneur, it was within those jobs that I just kind of started connecting some dots. It wasn't anything that I intentionally set out to do. It uh, is something that uh, kind of came to me as I pursued what uh, you know what my tasks were in those jobs. Okay, and so um, in the environment you grew up in, and um, I've just noticed from uh, some of the people from your generation who have become really successful entrepreneurs, they started out in the corporate world like yourself, and they they started out and um, got a decent paying job did really well in that job and eventually got en made enough money so that they could start their own company. Nowadays, kind of what you're seeing is um, people maybe like myself who are just getting out of college and they feel it's their life destiny that they have been made to uh, be an entrepreneur. Okay. Do you think that's a dangerous mentality to have? Do you think that that corporate experience or having a job is, is necessary? Um, no, I don't think it's necessary, and I don't think it's dangerous. Um, there's advantages and disadvantages to both of them. It depends on the individual's personal goals. Uh, for me, I, my goal was to complete my degree, establish that I can make a meaningful income, and have a family. That was my primary goal as I entered those years. It wasn't to become an entrepreneur. Um, now, someone else, as far as the goals is to become an entrepreneur and you know to, to raise a family, you have to have stability, and you've got to you've got to weigh some priorities there to see what it is that you're going to uh, pursue first and, and to pursue fully uh, there. Uh, so. You know, an entrepreneurship doesn't necessarily mean you can't have a family, but you'd have to have a spouse who is prepared to take care of things financially until you get that stability. Some people are in that position. Uh, I, I was not. So I had to establish stability, and our family was still pretty young when uh, I launched out on my own, but my wife had a uh, a full-time job as a registered nurse, or she got one shortly after I, I left with the corporate world so that we could do this and have that stability. Um, but we had gotten in a position where we could, could do that. Now, you said earlier that you get enough money so that you can become an entrepreneur. That wasn't necessarily the case with, mm -hmm. with us. Uh, we had a little bit of money, but uh, uh, you know, to be an entrepreneur and how you do it doesn't necessarily mean you need a lot of money. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you can really, a person can live on very little. It's just a matter of setting your standards, your, your lifestyle as to what you're going to do with your money and managing it well. Um, but as an individual, if you're working as an entrepreneur and you are the business, it can be done very inexpensively. It's as soon as you uh, rent an office space, or you um, hire another person, or you start uh, establishing uh, a, a bills for services that you need to have a good game plan and, and be able to have income coming in to accomplish those. Uh, do I think it's dangerous? No, I think it's exciting for somebody to go out and, and uh, say, I'm going to do this. This is. I'm going to skin my knees. I'm going to slam into some walls, but I'm going to learn from that. I'm going to. I'm going to be bloody, but I'm going to learn from it. And the next time I face that wall, I'm going to learn how to get around it instead of running right into it. Mm -hmm. And it, it. It's an exciting thing. Um, and there are. St the other part of it is there are. A tr there are gobs of resources for entrepreneurs today that didn't exist mm -hmm. 20 years ago. Uh, the word entrepreneur is probably a word most people, I would say a vast majority of people have never even heard mm -hmm. before that word, let alone all the resources that are available. Um, there was no degree of entrepreneurship 
in the universities then. And now that's a very That was my degree before I got out. Yeah. Yeah. So you have so many more resources to, to do it with. So I, I'd say if somebody has an inclination toward that, and that is you know, one of their life priorities, um, to uh, make sure you got some stability with the, the, the financial responsibilities that you have, and then go for it. Mm -hmm. and, and don't go for it a little bit, and make sure that, that you have a plan. Don't just go for it without a plan. You, having a plan and having a written plan is extremely important. You mentioned goals. Um, and there's, there's a lot of people, I, I myself really struggled with this early on. Um, talk about the importance of goals, because when, when I had first started, some of my goals were like, get up at 6.30 a.m. or um, whatever, <clears throat> take a shower today. Like, the, the goal, <laughs> not take a shower today, but, but I mean, like, there's, there's a difference between setting very minute goals and goals that are actually going to be meaningful in accomplishing something in business. Okay. Talk about the importance of setting goals and how you do it. Sure. Um, there's an acronym that I use with goals, um, and it's called SMART Goals. S-M-A-R-T. And I actually had an H on the end of that. Uh, you, you can look up SMART Goals, and it's a pretty common thing. But a goal has to be specific. It can't be get better at something. It can't be improve on uh, how, uh, uh, how well I uh, do payroll. That's not a goal because it's not specific. Because the M isn't measurable. It's S-M. It's got to be a measurable goal. I will um, uh, complete this particular task uh, X number of times each week so that I can eventually achieve uh, uh, the sales objectives that I need. So I'm going to make 15% uh, more cold calls a week, every week, so that I can achieve a uh, sales of X amount. It's got to be specific, it's got to be measurable. The next, it has to be attainable. You can't set a goal that is so lofty that you likely will not make it no matter how hard you try. Um, it also can't be so low that it's not a stretch. It has to be a stretch goal that is attainable. Somewhere in the middle. It, it, yeah, it, it, make sure that it's a stretch that you can get to and feel good about. And sometimes you have to set the goals, to, to, you have an end goal that is can be broken down into smaller pieces. Sometimes the big goal is too big, hairy, and audacious, and so you got to break that down into smaller goals that lead up to, mm -hmm. to that goal. Uh, so breaking it down so you can feel those accomplishments. If somebody wants to lose you know, let's say somebody wanted to lose 50 pounds. Whoo, my gosh, 50 pounds. But if you say, okay, I'm going to break this down, and I'm going to lose uh, 10 pounds in the first month. At the end of the, you know, okay, 10 pounds, work hard towards that 10 pounds in that first month and, and feel the satisfaction of completing that part of the goal in that first month. Or if you fall short, go, okay, I only got eight. Okay, now I need to work a little harder because next month I need to learn... 12. lose 12 to, 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 to keep on pace and you can see where you are as opposed to saying I'm going to lose 50 pounds in five months and you're at four, four months and three weeks and go I've only lost six <laughs> because you haven't seen yeah. it, you know keeping pace um, so the, the next one SMA for um, uh, attainable and the next is uh, relevant and this is getting back to what you had said earlier it's got to be meaningful Mm -hmm. It's got to be relevant to what your, basically your life goals are. Eventually it's got to really support what your life goals. And so it's important to start with those as your life goals, but then you put in business goals that, that support it. So you want to make sure your goals have a, a, a true purpose. And then the T is time bound. If you say you want to accomplish this thing, but you don't put a time on it, this is when I'm going to get this accomplished. That can go on for years. I'm still working on my goals when I'm 96 years old. 
that's not where we want to be. Right. But you have to put a time bound on it. So you have the S M A R T, and then the, the last thing that I put on there is H. And the H is the how are you going to do it? You have to have an execution plan to accomplish this. And an execution plan might be if you're losing weight is every morning I'm going to get up at 6 a.m. Mm -hmm. and I'm going to exercise for an hour. And I am going to go to the grocery store once each week and fill my cupboard with healthy foods to eat. And I'm going to put together a menu for the week to, to accomplish this. Now I'm taking this to a personal level, but expand that out into the business world. You have to have an execution plan. And uh, so setting goals is important, but a lot of people don't quite know all the parts that are that are needed within within the uh, uh, within making a good a goal a good goal. Definitely, having that roadmap is so important to actually achieving it. Mm -hmm. And writing so, it down. Right. Writing it down. Right. So um, when I was looking through your bio and some of the accomplishments you've had, one of the themes that popped out at me was leadership. Um, number one, we're here in your office, which you're the leader of, uh, your company, We Are IT. But even before this, in your corporate world, you had some leadership roles there. But even going beyond that, um, we've got a couple here, National Speakers Association, uh, American Club Association, St. Thomas More, which was where I went to grade mm -hmm. school, mm -hmm. uh, Boy Scouts of America, and Optimist International. Mm -hmm. Was leadership a skill that you were born with? Did you always know that uh, that was something you had inside of you, or is this something that you developed throughout your career? Um, in high school, I remember my, my uh, teachers making comments about leadership. Um, I went to a very small high school. And when I say very small, there were five in my graduating wow. class. So uh, to, to my, the next statement that, I, that I'm going to make is not uh, all that significant, but it points out your, your question. Um, I was voted to, to by the whole student body to be the uh, uh, student body president my senior year. Wow. So somewhere along the lines, people recognized that there were some leadership qualities that, that I had. But I really didn't understand what leadership meant back then. My, my professors would say, you know, you possess some leadership skills there and uh, th there's some, uh, 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 some things that you need to develop. I didn't, I, I, they didn't carry that further with me to help me understand what that meant. But apparently there was something there. And, uh, uh, you know, every time you step into a leadership role, it's scary. But you know, you rise to the occasion. And every leadership role that I've had has prepared me for the next one. And to, to have gone from leading Rockers with a degree and becoming the, the leader of a, of a company, not that we have a big company, but even this company, you, I could not have done that. But all the little steps in between, and being willing to accept the, the, um, the invitation to be the president of the uh, American Club Association, uh, or even a Boy Scout leader, you know, some of those things, when I was asked to do them, it was like, eh, I don't know if I can do that. But everyone clearly recognized you as the guy who was able to do all of that stuff. They, they, they invited me to, to do some of these things, and uh, I'm really glad that I accepted them because it helped me get out of my comfort zone, mm -hmm. and we grow when we're outside of the comfort zone. Mm -hmm. Okay, I want to respect your time, so we'll, we'll wrap it up here. But if you have just a couple little nuggets for someone out there who's... Um, maybe sitting in college and thinks that, that they have the chops to, to go after their dream in business. What, what can you say to that person? Um, talk to people that have done it before. You're not gonna learn it all from the books or the internet, but talk to people who have done it before. Um, don't think that you can, don't, you don't want to be limiting on what you can do, but you don't want to be saying, I can do it all. You've you got to have some, some focus 
on it, uh, on, on some, some limited things, which means you have to take some of the things that you really like and say, not right now, maybe later on, but you got to set those aside, and sometimes that's hard to do. But get focused on what is the most important that you want to really focus on. I think focus is one of the, 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 the biggest challenges that people face, uh, entrepreneurs, um, um, probably tend to be more successful at this uh, just because um, they, they have to be. But we have so many distractions in our world. Everything from cell phones going off to the marketing person saying, hey, I've got something that you really need to see. Um, and, and we want to uh, not miss out on anything. And so we go and we take a look here and we take a look there and we take a look there and by the end of the day or the end of the week or the end of the year, and we go, I really haven't gotten much done. But staying focused and when somebody asks can you help with this? Can you do this? Or do you want to do? Really look at it and go, is this going to help me with my goal? And if the answer is no, be willing to say, I appreciate your invitation, um, but it really doesn't fit in with my plans right now. And I need to stay focused on my plans. And people will respect that generally. Okay. And thank you so much for you joining. Bet. Thank you. And thank you guys for tuning in. And if you have an entrepreneur here in Kansas City or a businessman here in Kansas City who you would like to see on this show, go ahead and leave it in the comments down below.